So we can now go on to our second presentation of today by Professor Dr. Tajjin Rasti. Uh, thank you very much. Um, can you hear me okay? Uh, Charlotte, is my audio all right? Yes, we yes. can hear you. Yes, sir. Good. All right. Uh, uh, good evening, everyone. It's uh, my time here in Malaysia. Uh, usually, I am in front of a Malaysian audience uh, of various races talking about politics uh spirituality uh, education social issues and sometimes architecture even though i am a professor of architecture and uh, today or tonight uh, it is the first time that i'm uh, facing a really international audience that will be uh, listening to what i will be presenting about the evolution and future of Mars architecture in the context of what I term as global spirituality. The basic issue here is about the identity of religion and also the politics of modern life. We here in Malaysia are in the middle of the most, uh, uh, I would say, important crossroads uh, of our life, where uh, there is a head on clash between the identity of religion and the politics of modern life. And I choose to talk about the mosque tonight uh, simply because many view the mosque as a, as a pray, place of prayer. But apparently, uh, after many years of contemplating, the mosque is more a political place and uh, something which I would like to move on into what I call a more of a global spiritual place. Because when we talk about Islam, and religious identity, uh, the matter becomes very, very difficult. So the issue here is that Islam is at a crossroad in the world. Will it become a Talibanized version of narrow-mindedness and exclusivity, or will it be a progressive religion of inclusiveness and tolerance? Now, we, we had here about uh, 1980s, what we call the Islamic Reformation. The Islamic Reformation pro promises progressive religion of inclusiveness and tolerance. But what we have now is intolerance and exclusivity. The mosque architecture totally depends on which political Islam it is being framed in. And the talk advocates the idea of Islam as a religion with a global spirituality construct and not a limited cultural and geographical identity of which what it has become now socially, uh, as well as politically and also in the sense of art and architecture. At the moment, uh, looking at Malaysia, and I have only Malaysian case studies, although I keep an eye out also on uh, other places in, in the world, the planning of mosques represents a siege Islam. Most Muslims have the narrative that they are always under siege, that other people are trying to get rid of them or uh, becoming uh, enemies of them. Islam is under siege by extremists, number one, mainstream opportunists, number two, and most importantly, an ignorant populace instructed by an outmoded religious content. So many, many uh, civil society personalities blame politicians and leaders of, uh, of a religious group, but I am the only one who said that it is the problem of the middle class who have a very uh, simplistic idea of education, even though they have gone through university up to the PhD, but when it comes to religion, their critical thinking uh, is not there. Islam is seen as exclusive, dogmatic, intolerant, and regressive against the backdrop of ideas on democracy, civil society, inclusivity, and the multi-religious nation state. It is unfortunate now in Malaysia uh, and I think perhaps also in other so-called Muslim countries, uh, that uh, the modern ideas of democracy, civil society, inclusivity, are looked upon as a threat to Islam, when in fact, uh, 30 or 40 years ago, it is the aim of Islam to reform uh, uh, the nation from racial and nationalistic concerns to a more wider spiritual construct. An architect seems to be lost in the irrelevant world of historical typologies, sentimental styles, and sustainable pastiche because architects uh, 
do not deal with the question of uh, a global spirituality or a political ideology of Islam. Now, this picture shows uh, a, a, a very serious uh, extremist uh, um, situation that did not happen 30 years ago. And Malaysia went through a racial riot in 1969, uh, but this one is six years ago. And uh, not just having uh, some young people being paid to write um, uh, Chinese are pigs and, and also immigrants that they should die, but there is also the problem of a mufti or a leader or, or a religious, uh, what we call it, a, um, a state a religious leader paid by the uh, uh, state government who says that all those who are not supporting the uh, uh, the, the proposed amendment law in cutting off people's hands for stealing and all that are deemed to be kafir harbi. Meaning what he's saying is that all the parliamentarians who are both Muslims and non-Muslims can be deemed as enemies of Islam. This is, instead of uh, reprimanding this man, he has been decorated and uh, also, I think, still active. So, so there you have the problem of mainstream Islam being controlled by conservative and extremists, not because of just leadership, but also the support of the middle class. Now, my main message is that mosques must be designed within the idea of Islam that is more progressive and uh, um, dynamic, tolerant and friendly within the communal location in a global spirituality construct. Uh, a socio-political critique of mosque design is necessary uh, to look at the typology in a more inclusive community facility. The, the, the issue here is that the mosque is seen as a prayer place. Now, when I present and research about mosques from the religious perspective, from the historical perspective, from the political perspective, from the social perspective, I find that it is a facility. There is no requirement for the building of a mosque in Islam. And that is a very controversial statement. And I will show why I say that. The mosque is not a sacred building, but merely a facility. The issue also comes when the mosque is seen as sacred, as sacred as the uh, Masjid al-Haram in Mecca. And, and this is not so. Um, but as long as it is being seen as that, a lot of things uh, are very difficult to be implemented. For instance, the mosque uh, to be as a humanitarian place, uh, to serve uh, um, humanitarian needs, uh, to be a place for homeless, to be a place for, um, uh, what we call it, uh, disaster relief. Um, recently, we had the pandemic, and uh, even uh, to have the mosque as a place to, uh, uh, to, to have uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the booster shots um, is also become a problem. And there was an incident where some non-Muslims were allowed to be in a mosque during the flood. And that also became a huge issue. Why? Because of this idea that the mosque is a so-called sacred building, as sacred as the Masjid al-Haram. Now, I will explain the beginnings of the mosque and the evolution from what I see now uh, within the construct of what is known as the big history construct that puts in not only uh, the aspect of architecture per se, but also the aspects of politics and the aspects of spirituality. Firstly, there is no requirement of a sacred building of worship and the prophet Muhammad had declared all the earth as a place of prayer. Uh, for a Muslim, Muslims can pray anywhere. If a Muslim were, if the group of Muslims were in a convention hall anywhere, and the prayer time comes, and if they want to convert uh, that prayer place into a mosque, then it is is okay. Even a parking place can be a temporary mosque. So the earliest mosque was the meeting place of Muslims and the Prophet Muhammad, which was his own house. And the architecture of the mosque uh, uh, is equivalent uh, with the leader of the house with social, spiritual, political, educational, and welfare. Uh, in the Sirah Ibn Hisham and many of the so-called tradition books or the 
uh, hadith books. Uh, it records how the house of the prophet were used as a social center, political center, educational center, welfare center, and also spiritual center. In the Quran, it says that true piety does not consist of turning your faces toward the east and west, and the truly pious is he who believes in God, the last day, and the revelation, and the prophets of all, and spends his substance, however he may share it upon his near of kin, and the orphans, and the needy, the wayfarer, and the beggars, and the freeing of human beings. So you can see here, there are more than just prayers. Unfortunately, many Muslims think that prayers is the only one that is singled out, when in fact, these are the, uh, the social and, and even the political obligation of the Muslim society. And it does not say when it use the word orphans, it does not say that we use human being that it is limited to Muslims only. And this is so another problem. Muslims think that they must only help Muslims and cannot help others. And uh, this, is a, this is a terrifying narrative. And this narrative is being held by a middle class who have gone to the universities and that is the worst. Here is where the prophet had declared that all earth is a place for prayer and the performance of tayamun, meaning if there is no water for washing, then even the sand, clean sand and dust can be used for uh, the performance of uh, ritual ablution. We come now to the uh, revolution of the mosque. This is the reconstruction of the, of the, of the prophet's uh, uh, house. And uh, the prophet's uh, house, um, this was uh, uh, reconstructed and we can see here on, on this side, this is the, uh, the, uh, the, the rooms of the, uh, uh, the wives of the prophet and they used to meet here. And this is what some of the scholars call the tribal majlis, meaning it is a place where the leader of the Arabs, usually they meet in, in the tents because of the uh, uh, Arabs were, were, were Bedouin. But here in, uh, in, the, in Mecca or in Medina, where there, there is a house, it becoming a part of a town. So the mosque evolved from the house of the tribal majlis uh, into later on uh, the Samara mosque, uh, which people say it is a mosque, obviously it's a prayer place. But when I begin to read much of the history, it is more of a fortress. It is a military fortress. It is a place where uh, they would uh, have political administration and also have the uh, performance of prayers. Because as I said, when, when Muslims uh, uh, do their activities, they will then uh, just pray when the time comes for prayer. That, that, that is a, not an issue. They can pray in the desert and they can, uh, and they can have it uh, anywhere. And so uh, the cities, the Muslims built wall enclosure that was each enough to contain the whole Muslim population. When, when the army moved and, uh, and I was reading that they were firstly not allowed to mix with the, uh, the conquered nations. And so they would probably, I assume, uh, live around around the fortress and use it as a, as a defense mechanism. So the idea about the mosque being a, a, a place of prayer, the idea of uh, sanctity, of purity, actually uh, has a different look when we, we read Islam as a more political, a more uh, a, a wider um, a social force. The mosque then became uh, centers for learning. Uh, when um, it is required that the uh, teaching of the Quran and also the traditions of the Prophet uh, to, to the population. And it has grown into now what was known in the, in the, in the, in the Nusantara or in the Malay world as the Pasentran or the, uh, or the Pondo. And there, many places, the Madrasa, where the, uh, the, the so-called scholars uh, would, would congregate there would be the students. And of course, as I said, when there is an activity, then when the prayer time come, they would pray. And so the, the, the building would evolve from that. And it is important to understand that uh, because uh, if not, people would say the prayer comes first, then only the teaching. Well, that happens now, but it didn't happen in, in the olden days. The olden days, the activity comes first. And then the prayer is wherever the activity is. And later on, uh, some people begin to uh, uh, make sure that the tombs of the teachers uh, are, are being taken care of. 
and so it some something developed into what was called the two mosques. So we see that the uh, mosque madrasa of Sultan Hassan and uh, Ibn Tulun. These are centers of 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 learning, okay, and uh, not as just purely prayers. The mosque then became rabats and caravanserai, uh, small shelters in the middle of a long track. Uh, when people travel, then then uh, it is it is a place of safety and a rest for the for the uh, animals the camels and the horses uh, as well as place for prayer and this were the uh, idea of in islam uh, it is necessary to provide um, um, accommodation free for the uh, musafir mean the traveler it is stated by the prophet that that uh, uh, it is incumbent upon every muslim uh, to provide uh, lodging uh, for any Muslim or anybody uh, for three days, okay? And after the three days, it is sadaqah, meaning charity. But the three days, uh, if any one of you comes to my house and say that they want to stay, and, and then I, I'm obligated for three days. But on the fourth day, I can ask you to leave, or I can say, well, you can still stay on, but that becomes a charity or sadaqah. And this uh, act then evolved into what was called the caravan sarai. In other places, it's called the khan. And uh, uh, that is uh, how it came about. So when the Islamic empire disintegrated, in disintegrated the nation state, uh, the modern nation state countries came to being, uh, that is when the mosque became uh, more of a place of prayer. And it uh, becomes a cultural tradition or cultural product. And we can see here that the, uh, the uh, Damansara mosque here in Kuala Lumpur uh, began to follow the, uh, the typology of mosque because because then, then it's just considered like a, like a mosque. While they also have their own um, uh, tradition, which is in the, uh, in the uh, 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 Malacca Mosque or the Demak Mosque and, uh, and other mosques that, that have become. Here we have the uh, modernistic mosque, um, meaning in the modern era, um, here in Jakarta, as well as in Singapore, having uh, various languages of architecture uh, that, again, this one is for uh, prayers and then other activities. So mosques now are, are be, being made for prayers and, and the other activities are, are secondary in, 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 in that sense. Uh, so the evolution has, uh, has changed to that, to that uh, idea. Now the 20th century then saw the Islamic reformation movement coming into uh, Egypt and then spreading to India, USA, I was in the United States uh, for six years and uh, I was part of the Islamic Reformation. And then when I went for my PhD in UK, uh, we met all these uh, movements that uh, spread from Egypt, India. India was one of those places of uh, uh, origin of the Reformation, then went to countries like Malaysia. And so mosques were then divided into two, those that were built by the state government uh, that would be more emphasis for prayers and those that will be built by the reform, the reformists. And you can see the Islamic center in USA, that is the, the typology uh, of a center, the idea of an Islamic center where, where education, where, where discussion, where discourses were held alongside with prayers. When in fact, the other uh, 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 side, it is just mostly prayers and, 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 and uh, of that nature. So Islam is part of a global. Now this is my my move and my push into the idea of Islam as a global spiritual construct, rather than stuck within a geographical identity construct. And getting back to the early days of the reformist movement to to take away the issue of nationalism as well as racial uh, um, um, what do you call it uh, superiority. And this is a, a, a huge problem in this country, Malaysia. Now, in order to move forward, um, uh, Muslims must look into a different way. For instance, let's look at the Islamic Center, Washington, D.C. And I always ask the question, why was it that the Islamic Center did not uh, have a contextual architecture of the neoclassical architecture? And obviously, the answer then most Muslims would give that uh, they cannot we cannot, Muslim, we Muslim cannot follow the kafir or the, the non-Muslims uh, way of life and, and, and architecture. 
And uh, well, I disagree with that because uh, there's nothing to do with uh, such a uh, idea because if you would see this uh, mosque, uh, this is the mosque of Sultan Abu Bakar in Johor and it is neoclassical. And so, um, I mean, uh, the Sultan himself uh, who, who like aspects of Western uh, life uh, is also having this uh, idea and therefore this neoclassical architecture came into being in mosque architecture. Now in Islamic political ideology, there are many, many ideologies. Those are the more conservative, but the ones that are more progressive uh, says that Islam is about a civil state concentrating on justice, freedom of conscience, freedom of expression, good governance, separation of power, all the things that most of the modern nation, this is part of the uh, idea of the so-called um, a nation of Islam rather than an Islamic state. In the tradition of the prophet, uh, it was said that uh, uh, God said, O son of Adam, I fell ill and you visited me not. Uh, sorry, O son of Adam, I asked you for food and you fed me not. He will say, O Lord, how am I to feed you? You are Lord of the world. He will say, did you not know that my servant so and so asked you for food and you fed him not? Did you not know that had you fed him, you would have surely have found uh, that with me? Meaning that uh, uh, the idea of helping all, not just helping Muslims, and not just about prayers, but also about, but mostly it's about uh, helping others and only this, then you can construct a whole city about that. Professor? So these are others, uh, uh, okay, coming up to the, at the end. And we have here the, uh, uh, the Muslim Center in, in the United States. When I presented this at the university in Malaysia, um, many of the religious scholars did not like uh, the, 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 the thing that I had said uh, because uh, in this uh, community as uh, mosque or community center, it is uh, about uh, inclusion of others, says that this is a place for other people to come also. And uh, Professor, yes, Professor Tajuddin, yes. and we're now past 22 minutes. Okay. So uh, if you could start uh, wrapping it up, that would be great. Yeah. Thank you. Muslims must rethink their social and communal, uh, communal agenda, emphasizing activities that invite and engage the larger community. And the new architecture of the mosque must have a language uh, of material, plan, and conform to the uh, others. So, so this would be some of the new uh, images of the, the mosque uh, that is uh, uh, different than uh, all the others that we have. So Islam is at the crossroad of either becoming part of a global society or a destructive force of community of humanity. And the boss began as a facility for Muslims, but now we have to open it up for a bigger society. So, so from becoming just a place for Muslims, now we must look at a, a larger aspect of the mosque as a community center for all. Uh, with that, thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Tajuddin, for this thought-provoking presentation. And also thank you to the audience members posting questions in the chat. Uh, we'll ask those at the end.